Hello and welcome back to Blasters and Boomsticks. I'm one of your hosts, Grant, and I'm joined by the lovely full moon loving Dan. So t today, guys, we're reviewing the 2013 movie Where. It's set in France uh, with yep. an American attorney played by uh, criminal minds A.J. Cook, and she defends a murder suspect who has a brutish appearance and a deadly secret. So, what were your uh, impressions? Because, I mean, you've never seen this film before, and I'd never even heard of it until recently. I'd, I'd heard about it, and it was on a lot of people's lists of, of sort of um, films to watch, what you, you shouldn't go in knowing anything about. Um, I mean, I, I still did watch the trailer. Um, and Didn't was, pay attention then to your advice, did you? <laughs> no, because I'm like that. <laughs> That's right. That's how I became a dad. Put the cookie down. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not a tumor. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but yeah, it, 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 I was sort of hooked straight away by the trailer, um, and I just needed to watch it as soon as I saw that trailer. It felt like that there was a massive need to see it. Yes. Um, and I was not disappointed. It was such a strong film. It it sort of it toys with. Uh, mythology and um, films of, of this genre uh, that we've seen before it it sets itself up in an almost unique way that you've got someone being um, like we said in the synopsis uh, someone who's who's done these murders and has been defended for it but all the evidence points towards it is him but then they sort of have to unravel because he comes across as a gentle giant and it, the mystery has yeah. to unravel and then when it fucking kicks off it kicks off it feels like a kind of Frankenstein's monster story to start with yeah yeah and a, and a village an angry village mob yes which yeah, soon yeah. gets into a I mean guys spoilers but if you don't know by the title of a werewolf <laughs> yeah yeah this is the thing this is the thing it, it does it's, it does a very strong job of trying to reinvent the werewolf mythology um, by looking back on the mythology and, it, it, and looking at lycanthropy yeah. as a as a state of mind um, more than it's almost the Christopher Nolan approach to doing a comic book film. It's the like logical approach, not realistic, yeah. just logical approach of, of doing something for and taking the source oh, yeah. material and presenting it in a logical way in a, like a, a grounded setting. Kind yeah, of thing. it still has its sort of fantastical elements towards yeah, the, towards its finale. You know, you still have these you know, the sort of the you can't even call it a wolf out because they they don't do the whole sort of snarling no. beat. Well, they do a bit of snarling, but they don't do the thing. It's not. It's like no. It's a transformation of the mind, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It yeah. always reminds me of like Smallville. Always did the uh, no capes, no tights, no flights. Yeah, that was their rule for Superman: was that he couldn't wear his suit, he couldn't fly, you know, and and that was the the, the rules for for moving forward with Smallville. And this kind of has that same sort of approach, in that it's like you can do everything you want to for a typical werewolf movie, but your werewolf can't be. A werewolf, yeah, and it fucking works, and it works incredibly well. But it almost, to me, it almost takes away the film, like out of your thinking, of a of a like a modern kind of werewolf movie, mm. and it takes it back to like the original Wolfman, almost like humanoid, mm. like yeah. wolf yeah. man emphasis yeah. on both words, not just wolf. Well, that's the thing because the guy who who's who's um, playing um, his uh, name's Talon, is it? Yeah, Talon. He's um, he's what is he? He's like six foot eight, something like that. Probably taller. Um, yeah. Brian Scott O'Connor, um, and the guy is just his hands are fucking. It's it, it, they're in they're massive, and it's the way that he's covered in hair. But not in a, an overly really like ridiculous way. He's sort yeah. of unkempt. He's shaggy beard, shaggy hair. His nails are, are yellow, hardened, sort of slightly reached over the tops of his fingers, yeah. and he, just everything about him is beastly. Because he's 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 very tall, but he's like basketball esque almost. Where he's like, he's he's not he's not skinny. And he's not slim, but he's not. They've not like they've gone and got like John Cena or all that ridiculous mm. physique. They've got. It's very believable. Yeah. 
that yeah. he's so tall and he is in proportion, but then his hands and feet are huge. So he does feel like animal like and looks mm. animalistic. Yeah. It's just it's just impressive. It's just from that stature sort of him those images of him being walked through the first time you see him properly, he's being led through in handcuffs. Yeah. Into police station, and the story sort of unravels really quickly. In that you you've got um, we start off with the the camp, uh, the the three the family camping, yeah, um, and the dog starts barking at something in the woods, so Dad goes over to look. It's all this done. This found footage and yeah, it's fr- shot like that, so we get yeah. to see every aspect, don't we? Yeah, and it's done really well because the the family get attacked, and then the next thing you get these little police uh, so news reports about someone yeah. being arrested for these murders and then you get security camera footage of this talking guy being led away um by the police into an investigation room and he's compliant yeah you know he's going he's gone quietly he's not sort of throwing everyone off and you know beating the, the shit out of each other yeah you know, and smashing skulls that's safe for later on <laughs> <laughs> but this so we're introduced to um i said aj cook because kate yeah. Um, straight away with uh, Vic. Is it Vic Sahay? Yes. Yeah. It's, yes, it's Eric. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're sort of helping. She's she's his lawyer. They sort of yeah. look at the investigation, and then sort of they're introduced to. Um, is it Gavin? It is. Yeah. He's, Sam he's Quarterman. Kind of, yeah, he's, I think people know him kind of from Westworld and stuff, but he's. Um, He's an ex, isn't he? Of yeah, um, yeah, of, uh, of Kate's. Kate, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so there is kind of, it's not played and talked about too much. It's maybe mentioned in a couple of scenes, which is why I think it's great because it gives you some history, mm. um, but it doesn't take over the film at all. It, it's highlighted specifically by two characters for, for like one minute like one three minute scene so to me that's again another thing that it gets right it doesn't bog you down in unnecessary detail it, it's straight to the point it's snappy um and i think you're right i think from from my point of view the cast like you know aj cook perfectly fine and doing what she does and there's a little kind of beauty in the beast kind of thing mm. going off when she's interviewing him for the, for the first few times and yeah. stuff. Um, but I think the star of the show is, is the wolf and it is the procedural detail of the film. And it is the fact that we see the police footage, we see the interviews we see. Then we obviously see standard film where we see characters mm. back and forth, you know, talking to each other. And then we'll see security cameras. And it all adds to the fact that I was speaking to you off, off camera um, just before I recorded, saying that I watched this on my phone, yeah. uh, you know, 4K. And <laughs> it, it's great because it adds something to the... Um, to the effect of seeing stuff on a security footage, on seeing things on local like bystanders footage that they've taken, and and, and the and a little like TV and, and and internet footage that you see. So I think it, it just it just has a culmination effect of of really drawing you in. So you've got the procedural kind of following the the French authorities, then you've got the people team, the defence team defended him. Then as an audience, we're trying to figure out what's going off because we obviously know from the title that there's something mystical that's happening here. Yeah. Um, and I think it just it just adds up to one it's one hell of a film. It's it's the best I, werewolf movie I've seen for years. It's and it's fantastic. You're right, you can put and I think what I loved about it was that they, they try and like I said, the world building, they they try and explain what's going off scientifically you know they, 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 they sort of talk about Talon because of his they look at his past and they you know, go visit his mother and his uncle had the same issues you know he's, he was tall you know like seven foot tall hairy and, and everything um and it was the it's the condition uh, i think did they call it was it perforia yeah um, yeah it's where which, the brittle bones and the bones yes. are too small for the frame of the body or something like that yeah yeah, and it's sort of like sort of testing, the testing, and obviously it comes up um, as positive, um, and they uh, they want to because they talk about um, that it might be epileptic, so they want to induce seizures because they're trying to prove that he wouldn't have the capability to attack these people. 
Yes, yeah. And so they go to the scientific approach. And then I, I love it because they, they put it, obviously, it's a, it's, a, it's a minimum security sort of hospital setting, um, which the police don't want anything to do with. Because this, there is an ongoing background story where um, the French government want to use Talon's mother's land as a, is it a nuclear waste yeah. site? They're on a quite, a, the, the land that they live on is quite um, dense. Dense, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, Obviously, there's other there's stuff that's going on as well. But um, they do this test, and it, it, they do the epilepsy test where they're doing a strobe lighting. And it's the first time we get a, a, a real, other than the little found footage thing at the start, we get a real uh, sense of just what Talon really is. Because um, he, he, without physically transforming into something else, there is a, a complete, it's, it's like pure rage that descends yeah. upon him and he breaks out his strap and he completely decimates yeah. the entire science crew. Um, and it's not shy about its, it's gore and its violence. No, but, well, I, but not I, in a showy over the top way. Yes, yeah. I was just going to say that it, it kind of respects what film it's in, that it's like you, you're witness to this almost. It, again, like going back to what I was saying about watching it on the phone, it doesn't matter because I actually cast it to the TV back and forth, but watch the majority of the film through the phone. And it just feels, like you said, that scene specifically feels like you are a fly in the wall there. Mm. You feel a little bit like, I feel like I'm prying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Prying in. Um, but there is a couple of scenes where the the, the remains of the um, of the dad and the young boy from the beginning um, mm. of the movie, the family that's attacked, the, the vacation in there in uh, Leon, I think. Um, <sighs> wow, I mean, it is again. It's not thrown in your face. It is just very procedural, like you expect these people when they're doing their job to be like. But yeah. I think like the dad's like bottom jaw's missing, his head's turned around, his like one of yeah. his legs has just got every bit of muscle and skin chewed off. Um and then the boy's pulled out and he's just yeah. got a head and a chest and you're just like wow. And again it's shown only very fleetingly, but mm. it's just like Wow, and I think the mum who survives who's on camera when she turns her face yeah. and like, oh, yeah, and it's impactful. I think that's what it. Oh yeah, that's the yeah. word. It's impactful. It's not. It's not showing off it because we all know, as gore, it can, <laughs> gore can really, really set the tone, mm. or it can really, really feel like Tom and Jerry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, some things do, and I think this was perfect for setting the tone yeah. for the story they wanted to tell. I mean, there's a nice bit that, as far as sort of actual transformations go, that obviously we don't. Again, we we never. I don't want people going into thinking this is a typical werewolf film where it's not. He Talon will become a wolf at the end. It, it doesn't. He, there's a, a a slight physical change. Um, where the uh, you see shoulders shoulders sort of separate and mm. and everything in this high rise building, um, and he's. Uh, the police are descending on a slot. The SWAT team are going in to send him to catch him because he gets he gets loose or something. And the thing I was impressed with is it, because it limits its use of CGI. But there's the bit where the, they're wondering how it's going up there. You know, there's all the how it's going, and this body gets thrown out of a window and lands on top of a car, and then Talon leaps out of I don't know how many stories. It's pretty high. He leaps out, and you just see his body sort of fly out. I think it's the news the news team that are catching it, and yeah. then he lands. You know, right way, like sort of cat like, yeah, on the ground, and just sort of looks at them and runs off. And it's like, it's probably the only, I, think, I would say, full use of CG, yeah, but because it's done so sparingly, it, it really fits, it doesn't take you out of the film at all. No. It's such a nice little moment that just shows you we've seen how strong he is, now we've seen how agile he is. Yeah. Why are people consistently trying to chase this fucker down? Like, I don't want to know to do him. <laughs> just let him go back no. home. That's all he wants to do is go yeah. back home, let him go. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and to say everything, this is, again, spoilers, but to say everything we talked about and to go back to the gore and to go back to, like, you just said about the, you know, uh, the little sort of changes in his bone to his back. Mm. Um there's a scene that I couldn't watch and I had to watch it and it's probably one of the only times I'll ever kind of put a pillow or my fingers in front of my face is when they're doing the eye test. 
And when he, oh, oh God, I, I have a thing for eyes. It really bothers me. Um, and always, always as. And it's where, I mean, when, when, um, when Talon are doing the, the eye test on him, yeah. um, fair enough. I didn't like any of that. But when he's doing the, you know, when Gavin's doing it himself, because yeah. he's, um, suspects he, he might have been infected for lack of a better word yeah um, and he cuts his eye it's oh no <laughs> no but i don't know what if it was just me but i also took from it that he could have had that disease as well as being like a werewolf yeah yeah as in that's why most of the time his family may have died yeah it, you know and, and then it's so the mum it's that's why I think the film's very layered. Like you can take it on face value that these characters are telling the truth, but there's something else to it. Or you can take yes. it that the fact that it is like a bit of a not conspiracy, but there is a cover up going off from the police and from the family. So yeah. and I think that's it. It's to me it was it was so interesting. I was so taken up by the characters. Um and it, I feel like it successfully reinvented the werewolf movie. Yeah. It's- and I think it did. A, it's done a lot for me for for found footage movies because mm. I think the only found footage or as I call it other footage where you see a security camera and it's blended yeah. into found footage and blended into actual real film. And the only film to do anything like that was the film Searching, which was spectacular back in 2018, and this is obviously you know released in 2013. Yeah. Um, but. <laughs> Watching the film afterwards, I sat there and it, for a couple of minutes and I was like, it's just completely pulled the rug from underneath me. Mm-hmm. I was surprised by the level of quality of this film. Yeah. Um, and it's a film that feels like it's only an hour and a half, which is great anyway, but it feels it feels less. It feels like, like a 70 minute movie. Yeah. And sometimes you don't <laughs> bang on about it all the time, but the length of the movie is really important. <laughs> Not to have several thousand endings and not to overstate its welcome. Um, yeah, so I think I've got, only got a couple of issues. And one of them is I think there's sometimes there's probably about four or five jump scares in the movie. Yeah. And I think you always get one. So I'll, I'll give it that. I think there's one that's worked really well, but the rest of them weren't needed. A little bit cheap, really, because the film is much better quality than it doesn't yeah. need any of it. It doesn't need just doesn't it, it just stands above a better class of, of film than that um but you know actually thinking about it, it might just be might just be that those those few yeah. jump scares that are my issues with it yeah because yeah i think it, it, <laughs> i will be surprised if anybody finds this film by accident and doesn't enjoy it because yeah. I'm sure everybody's reaction is going to be one of a little bit of a shock when we think this is a great film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Recommended, so, recommended them? Absolutely recommend it. Absolutely. Yeah. Go out there, watch it as soon as you can. Though there's a, there is a huge in my eyes market for werewolf films. There's a, a void there. There's 25,000 vampires to the point where they've got to be romantic interests and chick flicks and sparkly little shits. Whereas <laughs> werewolves, really, they don't really get the love they deserve. The movies yeah. don't. So I think, you know, we spoke about it in The Howling. There is a gap in the market for me. And I think this is, should be the start of the way we start to think about how werewolves can possibly make it into like modern cinema. Yeah. So. And uh, you, I take it, your yeah. recommendation. Yeah, I can't recommend it early enough, mate. It's, it's absolute genius. Yeah, yeah. I think nice. Even without it being, if you if you took away the any kind of mention of lycanthropy like, and any mention of werewolves, which does get peppered about, but it's not. It's only because that's the the nearest thing these characters can explain to what's going off. Absolutely. Yeah. It still works as a strong strong film. It doesn't need that. Yeah, you know, the only thing that came away was like every time because it's called where, um, and it just pinged in my head was the whole thing from Young Frankenstein with werewolf, <laughs> werewolf, and that was <laughs> that's it. That's the only thing that's, that's distracted me, which is stupid, but that's just no. how my brain works. But do you think that any good horror really 
the horror aspect, the mythology is the cherry on top of a story. The oh, story is always yeah. something else. It's always yeah. a, about a bigger picture. And I, yeah, I, I thought this just just brilliant. So two thumbs up, guys. There. Um, so yeah, go out and watch it. You've not really got an excuse. It's old now. You should be able to find it anywhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, so that's from all from uh, me and Dan today. Um, we'd love it if you'd like this video. Uh, maybe give us a subscribe if you enjoy what we're doing. Um, but most of all, you could just share it. That'd be great. Share it on social media. That'd be lovely. Let your friends find us and watch it for yourself or themselves. Um, so yeah, guys. Um, you know, join us again.